Aloha, everyone. It's Wednesday, and you all know what day that is. It's Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And I'm your host today, Mitch Ewan. And I'm really happy to have Richard Ha, my guest. And uh, normally we talk about other things like oil and peak oil and things like that. Mm -hmm. Although uh, we did do one on face masks, homemade face masks. And this is kind of a carry on from that. We're going to talk about air filters today, uh, mobile air filters. And uh, Richard's got the latest and greatest uh, news on this type of technology, which is available from e everywhere, but how we can use it to combat uh, COVID-19. So welcome to the show, Richard. Hey, aloha. Aloha. So just give a quick 60,000 foot view of why, why are we talking about air filters? I mean, I thought this is all kind of pretty standard stuff. But what's, what's new and why are we talking about it and what, what's the interest here? Yeah, the, the, the reason it's new is because the CDC issued a directive on October 5th, which was just uh, last week. Right. Um, if everybody remembers when um, Dr. Fauci came and talked to uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor Green, that was the day after it, it, uh, the CDC. And, and essentially what the CDC said was that they recognized that uh, the virus spreads by uh, air, air as, as well as by big droplets that fall at your feet by six feet. Right. So when, as soon as they, they said that, it opened it up because it's basically saying that you got to worry about what's floating around in the air now. Prior to that, nobody did anything right. in that direction. That's so first we went face masks to take off the big chunks. Yep. If I can characterize it that way. And now we find out that there's still a very fine aerosol out there. And that certain types of just normal off the shelf uh, air purifiers um, can combat that. So maybe we, could you go in a little bit more detail about that? I mean, I may be glossing it over. It's just not any kind of air purifier, but talk, talk, talk to us about the technology. Yeah, the, the real issue is that 40 to 45% of the folks that are spreading the virus don't have symptoms. In other words, we don't know and they don't know they have symptoms. Right. And so when, when they're uh, sitting in a room, indoor space, um, we don't know if, if, who we're sitting next to. So these portable air purifiers, and it's really important to, to note that I'm talking about portable air purifiers. We're not talking about air conditioning or central okay. air, which is right. talking about portable air purifiers. And the portable air purifiers, that's what they do. They remove virus-sized particles from the air. And they're pretty efficient at it. I mean, they get up to 90, 90 something, 99%, wow. as long as, as, as and, and you know, the, the better ones um, do a complete cycle um, in about 10 minutes. You know, like wow. if you get one that's uh, sized for a room, 500 square feet. right? Every 10 minutes, it goes through the filter and removes whatever goes through. Right, right. And, and so that, that is the big deal. Um, then after that, we, okay, if we know that, then what do we do about it? Right. Yeah. And how do we look at it? You know, one way to look at it is to say, you know what? The CDC just made this announcement. The, the WHO heard the scientists, you know, bring it to their attention and they just noted it. They didn't say anything more. They acknowledged it and didn't say anything more. The CDC, on the other hand, did say that it does, yes, it does uh, transmit by air. Right. So, so that's, that's what we're, we're looking at. And so now why, why are we looking at uh, schools? Right. And the reason we're looking at schools is because a recent, um, study in India, 500,000 people contact tracing. Right. They found that uh, a lot of this spreading is by young people uh, from, from, from kids to college age, yeah, somewhere around there. Right. And they, this is the first time they actually uh, detected that. So, so if that is the case, then our question is, what do we do about it? Because yeah. if we know that, what are we gonna do about it? Right. One way of looking at it is to say, you know, prior to the CDC's um, last guidance, we were operating on what the old one was. 
And the old one was, you know, they, they didn't say they spread by air uh, in, in droplets and, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it spread by air and, and it could hang in the air for a long time. It did not say anything like that. Right. So if we, if we use the U.S. mainland as an example of what life was like under the old rules, right? we know that there's a whole bunch of people that got uh, sick in adult, adult care centers. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and and we know that in some jails, there's been huge amounts of uh, uh, um, inf infection. Yeah, and right. and the the CDC because now that they uh, uh, acknowledge that they're they're telling people to be very careful about indoor air, and and the reason I am uh, especially concerned is because they're 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 discouraging people from going into restaurants. And, right. and the, the issue really is, you know, we, we, we've got to help those restaurants make money because they, 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 they're, they're just barely hanging on. Um, and, and why I'm concerned is because I'm a farmer. The restaurants buy food for farmers. They buy the product from the farmers. Yeah. So it's all tied together, yeah? Right, big systems engineering approach to it, but there's all sorts of Leverage, like you said, the you know the restaurants have to get their nice fresh fruit from somebody. Let's go get yeah. the farmers. So, exactly. Yeah. So, how can a restaurant address this? I mean, part part of first before you say that, I mean, tell us a little bit about your organization and and why you guys are taking this on. Well, you know, sustainable energy Hawaii is is about um, energy. Yeah. Right. So, and and we 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 know that. Uh, fossil fuels are declining and right. we know that we've got to prepare and then we're talking about climate change and declining fossil fuel and we've known that for a long time 10 years and right. it's been a slow thing we we're watching it and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and now that's still in the background but we got to take care of this first and and right. that's why sustainable energy hawaii no matter uh, you know in spite of the fact that it, our primary purpose is energy Another way of looking at it is food is the primary source of energy, not oil, right. it's food. Yeah. So if we start to think about the bigger picture, maybe we gotta start to consider and put food growing in the same category as energy, same right. important. Right. So, okay, anyway, so I'm getting my question before I kind of got us off a little bit off track is, so what, for example, can a restaurant do? I mean, what's kind of the, what's the solution here? You have an example you know, of a restaurant that's taking the initiative and doing that. So maybe you want to tell us what they're doing as a model of how we can address okay. this. You know, Peter Merriman's uh, Waimea restaurant? Yeah, They've restaurant. committed. Yeah, they've committed to, to, to install uh, air purifiers. And, um, you know, like Peter, Peter Merriman, you know, he's a, a, he thinks far in advance and he understands, uh, you know, so, so he just jumped out there in front and how far in front he's even installing small purifiers in the restrooms because right. he, even in the CDC instruction, they, they ref, refer to that as a possible way of transmitting, but they talk about sewers. So he th took it upon himself and said, you know, why not? just to be safe. That's, that's, that's what's happening. And he's gonna be a really great example of what the Hawaii Restaurant Association probably needs to do. Um, and, and the reason for it is because like, like I said, the CDC, uh, if you read through it, it looks like it's discouraging people from going into indoor spaces like that. So right. if we have portable air purifiers in those spaces, the job of the air purifier is to um, lower the virus load in the air. So, you know, you can you can you can do all the things that they recommend, you know. Um, but there's studies that show that downwind of how the air conditioning is blowing the air, right. you can transmit the virus from from one table to the next table to the next table. Right just by the way the air is moving. And that's why air purifiers strategically set up can mitigate that. 
So how, how big a how big a volume can uh, one air pure? I know they come in different sizes, but approximately how, how many? You know, I've been to Merriman's. You have so how many kind of how many of these purifiers do you think it might take to provide that for for them, or or a classroom? You know, kind of size room. Yeah. So so an example would be Kilkaha Elementary School. They okay, took it upon themselves to go ahead and equipped the whole school with portable air purifiers. Right. And what they did was they took uh, uh, consumer reports and used that as, as a way to analyze which ones they would get. Right. And they, they took the third highest rated uh, air purifier for about 500 square feet. Okay. And then what they did was they, they used that one size for every single one of their uh, rooms that they're 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 gonna cover, but right. but in some cases, like most classrooms are like around seven hundred square feet, right? Instead of having one small and a big one, one big one, they got two big ones, right? Now they over over strengthened it, or, or you know, uh, which is which I thought was really good because now sure th you've got more redundancy, you got more ability for the people who know what's going on, like the teachers, right. to to position the, the, the air purifiers. So, 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 so the answer to your question was that they took a purifier that can do 500 square feet. It cost $250 landed on the big island. Right. And uh, it rotates the air every 10 minutes. Right. So that's, that's what they did. And it, it was based on the uh, uh, consumer reports. Okay. So how are they paying for it, Richard? Well, in this particular case, they knew, they knew that this, the, you know, before the C CDC instructions came out, we all knew it, that it was airborne. So they took it upon themselves right. to go and fix it. And right. that's how they decided. This is kind of like grassroots, like, okay, we're not- Oh yeah, absolutely. Gonna jump on this. You wouldn't believe what happened. You know, uh, so we well, were thinking- tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so we were thinking along these lines for a long time. Yeah, I mean it's a, a, a continuation from the masks. Yeah, it's the same kind of a principle, just understanding what uh, what makes common sense. Right. So we we came to the conclusion: gee, would, wouldn't it be something if we started a program to get a school as an example? So it, it just so happened that when I called Kumu uh, Stacy Bello, so the principal of the school, she was thinking of it because she had installed air conditions for all her classrooms. And then she was thinking that she needed to have air purifiers to, right. to meet the, the, to the standards that was passed down to, to, uh, to accommodate the uh, air, uh, air condition. So right. when I called her, she was on the same page. We were all on the same page. Right. But what was pretty amazing was that it took us two weeks from idea to implementation. How in the world and can you do that in Hawaii? Tell us. Hey, it was so simple. I, it, <laughs> so the, the persons involved were myself, uh, Stacy Bello, and uh, Jeremy McCumber, who was the president of the uh, uh, the associate, uh, um, the nonprofit attached to the school. So Perfect. he was the guy that says, you know what we should do? We should do a GoFundMe program. Right. And then we talked about it and then, you know, we kind of said, what if you did eight GoFundMe programs? Like one for the preschool, one for kindergarten and one through six. So there's eight of them, right? Right. So they have a template of all the different uh, room sizes. So it was easy to figure them out. And then it came out to a total of $20,000. Right. So $20,000 divided by eight comes out to $2,500 and you can adopt one of the classes. Oh, cool. What a great idea. <laughs> pretty, pretty unreal. I mean, it, that's how fast it went, you know, two weeks from idea to implementation. And oh. now they've raised more than 7,000. Right. Yeah. So We're two of the classes. There. Yeah. Kind of, you know, and there's some more coming. Yeah. 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 Cool. So, so, so that's, that's, that's what they did. And they, they weren't going to wait for anybody. They were just going to go do it. So that's, but now we're talking about gee, maybe we should do this for the whole, uh, all the classrooms on the island. Right. 
And that and that's where your question about CARES funding. So we will go and apply yeah, to for CARES funding. So I know you're the guest, but I'm going to come up with an idea. Like so, uh, my friend uh, Dave Donald, who you've met, uh, is an you know he's an Amway distributor, and Amway has this really uh, kind of rocket science air air cleaner, a mobile air cleaner like you're talking about. But the thing I and I bought two of them because I, I needed them in you know my home. And uh, the thing I liked about it is you could dial in on the internet and it measures how well the filters are doing. It has, it has all the uh, three different types of filters. So you could do that with the, with the classroom. If you've got a smart um, air filter system, um, you could actually monitor them. Because one of the big issues I find is that people don't maintain things. You turn it on and you leave it running forever. But at some point, you're going to have to change the filters out. And so what this does is it tells you when you need to, you know, how much life you have left in your filter. So maybe, you know, you get the school and you hook it all up to like a centralized computer that, you know, you put in some alarm bells uh, when it gets to a certain point. So, you know, when you have to, you know, change up the filters and because the thing is not, you know, not doing as well as it could. So just an idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because that, that you have to make sure that you, you change it on time or when, when, when it needs to be changed. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. But, but I wanted to make clear that our group, Sustainable Energy Hawaii, is, is, is trying to implement this thing, but we don't want to own it. We okay. want to help people get it going, help, help get the funding. And then uh, once they're on their way, then we go back to our original mission, yeah, which is hydrogen. Okay. Right. There you go. Good man. That's why I like you so much, Richard. <laughs> so, um, how are you spreading the word? I mean, uh, obviously, you're going to use our Think Tech Hawaii show because you're going to get a YouTube video. So let's make sure we cover all the points. And that there's yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You can spread it out to your network. But what other, how, how else can we get the word out, get the buzz out? You know, next week, I'll be on a panel discussion talking about the uh, uh, agriculture right and it's going to be an unconventional way of looking at things right uh, it takes energy to do work and yeah. and actually there's there's two things going on like i said at the start we have the uh, climate change and fossil fuel decline we know that's coming and yet at the same time we have this pandemic that we're going to take care of immediately and effectively because we cannot afford to have a shutdown and we're probably the most dependent on tourism of all the uh, states. Right. So the potential downside for us, if you don't do this right, is pretty serious. So I would oh, think- Oh, I didn't answer your question. Yeah. yeah, so I think the hotels would be another target uh, for this kind of technology. It's pretty simple technology. Yes, yes, it's, it's very, you know, and so it really comes down to the, the making the air we share safe and generally, it's a uh, indoor area. Yeah. So, so what the air purifiers do is it uh, removes the uh, that that's what it does. It removes the virus particles from the air, and it uh, if we're lucky, it raises it up high enough where this it might not transmit. Right. Yeah. So if that is the case, oh, you mean you diluted enough. Yes, so it gets through. It's just like little tiny things in your immune system can handle it. You're not, you're not getting a big load of virus in your body all at once. That's the whole point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. And that hasn't been in effect anywhere. But this right. is the first time that that we're thinking about it. It's a new thing, and but we gotta get everybody covered. You know, like like let's that's okay. We gotta get the jails covered. We gotta get the adult uh, care. Places covered, restaurants, um, you know, gyms, every, you know, stuff like that. Plus all the uh, indoor spaces that make sense. Yeah. Sure. Like even in the airports themselves, we're going to have a system spread around. Yeah. And and really, what you're hoping for, and and I want to be sure that we're not promising anything, but we're we're thinking, gee, what happened if the air filtration is effective enough to raise it up where? the virus cannot hide anymore. Right. You know, because asymptomatic is why we're having such a hard time. We can't see the virus. Yeah. But this is a way to eliminate or, or lessen the load to, to, to your point, yeah? 
Okay, so what about the Department of Education? I mean, now here's, here's a grassroots experiment going on in one of their schools. Um, are, you, are you planning to take it to the, uh, you know, the Board of Education and say, look guys, I mean, this is a pretty low cost way to keep the cakey safe and the teachers, of course. Yep. Yeah, no, we, we are right, right. So it's early days and we're, we're pushing really hard because it just happened, yeah, the CDC. Sure. So, yeah. so absolutely what you're saying, we're going to have that conversation with the uh, uh, Department of Education. But you know, we're, we're engaging the, the folks here on this island, you know, the complex area superintendents that, that yeah. is in charge of all the schools. Right. We're talking to them actively. So, and, and they're, they're, they're on board. They, they know that, you know, and like I mentioned, you know, the uh, study in India shows that uh, kids spread it from, from young, young, young children to, to uh, uh, you know, college age and stuff like that. They spread it to each other, yeah. So, so, so if we can protect the kids in the school so that it, they don't spread it, yeah. because you, the, the, the child can come in and be asymptomatic spreader. We will, nobody would know. The right. person, the kid would just sit in the room. When we do this, we give ourselves a chance of preventing it from spreading to other kids to send back to their family. That's what the deal is here. Right. So, so I think that's why we start uh, with children. I would think the Hawaii Tourism Association and the rest, I think they have a restaurant association too. I thought I saw something in the news recently. I mean, you know, all these kinds of associations would yes. appear to be good targets. Like you educate them at the top level and then we want it to spread virally. Yes, yes. Up to yeah. as many businesses as possible, you know, so that they can put this stuff in place and be proactive. And, yeah. and we're not talking a lot of money here. No, 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 no. You know, to, to give an idea how much money we're talking about, you know, taking Kyokaha Elementary School and the data we got from there. So yeah. basically they have 400 students at that school and it right. costs 20,000. That means $50 a person. God. So there's 24,000 students in the, in the DOE system. That's about 1.2 million. Right. That's chicken feed for, for well, what the Department, of Health, the, Department, the State Department of Health is sending, sitting on tens of millions of dollars. That, yeah, and, and, and I want to be clear, yeah, that it's not anybody's fault. They just changed I and they got to respond to the change really fast, yeah? Well, I'm looking at who's got the big pots of gold so we can go that much faster, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it takes time to do a, a crowdsource. I mean, you got to get it out there. People have to do the thing and then you have to buy the equipment. Whereas, you know, if we can go in there with a big pot of gold and, uh, you know, buy a massive amount of these things and bring them into Hawaii, then you can distribute it faster. Yeah, yeah. and you know, because of Kyoka Elementary, the Department of um, Hawaii Energy is, is giving rebates because of the efficiency. Right. Because these are energy saver kinds of- uh, Oh, no I'm kidding. Yeah. Really? <laughs> so, so, and they're also interested to see if people buy a big load, they can get a discount from, from the company. But yeah. that's a higher level than me. Yeah? It's, it's going to have to be the Department of Education and all that sure. stuff to decide. But well, I was in Costco the other day and I see that they're selling these kinds of mobile air filtration systems. They look a lot like the ones that uh, Amway had. Uh, I, next time I go to Costco, I'll check them out further. I guess I could just go online to Costco and, and check them out and see what their, you know, what the technology is there. Yeah. But, and 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 to be clear about our position is that we we are using uh, consumer reports and that those kinds of third party right. to 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 because you know how it is. Huh? It's a uh, uh, marketing and promotion. Yeah. You, you just, sure. uh, people can say anything about anything. Right. So uh, what are some of the, uh, what, what kind of messages do you want to leave? We got about five or six minutes left in our, in our show today. So what have we missed? Um, Hawaii Tourism Authority. Okay. We, wanna, we want to have a, a meeting with them, you know, from John DeFries, you know, down. Okay. And, and then just talk story because, uh, you know, and, and encourage them, you know what, it would be good if you guys put some money in Kyoka Elementary, adopt one class. Right, adopt a class, there you go. Yeah, 
Yeah, and and but more than that, you know, it's to talk about the tourism industry and how they can fit in and how it's, it needs to be it needs to be safe uh, and economical at the same time. Yeah, sure. so we can have that discussion. Yes, and then and the other thing is sharing data. So like yeah. particularly if. Uh, you know, some of these, I mean, I don't know about the ones they've already installed, but if we get these ones that, you know, you can monitor online, then you're going to get a lot of data out of it. Yeah. You know, what I have, um, you can tell when it starts and stops and how fast the fan runs. So, you know, you get this graph that goes up and down, up and down, and you can tell exactly what's going on and when it's doing its air change. And it senses itself yeah. when it needs to be run. I don't know how the heck they do that, but... It does, and, and it tells you how dirty the air is at the same time. It measures yeah. the, the amount of stuff that's in the air. Yeah, that, that, that's all good stuff. It, then it comes down to how much does it cost, yeah? Right. Well, this one was kind of expensive. It was about uh, $1,200. Now, that was like two or three years ago now. And so, you know, they've probably gone down by quite a lot. You know, so the uh, consumer reports, the number yeah. one uh, rated for the given space was um, about $800. The number two was $300. Number three, which Kyokoha Elementary got, was 250 They essentially did the same amount of moving of air. There's sure. a lot of, there might be gadgets and all of this stuff, but as far as fil filtering the air, yeah. They would, they, that's how they decided. So what about our going to our congressional delegation and also uh, have we got the politicals involved yet? Do we have our reps, you know, our senators and our, uh, our local uh, reps like Rep Lowen and Rep Nakashima? Have they, have they been brought in? Yes, yeah, so, so, so we, haven't, we haven't reached out to, to them just yet, but we will uh, as soon as we get this you know, like this video and right. go, go on the next program. And, you know, um, we're, we're working with Peter Merriman to do a, right. a press release about their opening and why and stuff like that. So then we'll, you know, and, and we don't have time yet. I mean, every week is, is, is yeah, goes, right. goes by. So we got to do everything what you, what you, what you're pointing out yeah exactly we're going to ramp it up because you know if, if yep. especially yep. as tourists start coming back into town you know this is like being really proactive and like you said we need to get going we can't just sit around and talk about it and i love yeah, the fact and, that the school got you know really got after it thanks to your organization to jump on top of it yeah yeah so so yeah that's so, what we gotta do yeah well believe it or not richard we've blown through 30 minutes and uh <laughs> Time to wrap it up. So first of all, I'd like to really thank you a lot for coming on the show at short notice. I'd also like to thank uh, Sustainable Energy Hawaii for taking this initiative, this gra grassroots support to, to solve a, an immediate problem to help Hawaii, all of us here in Hawaii. So well done uh, for doing that, I appreciate it. When you get the video, use it as a tool. Remember you heard it here first on Think Tech Hawaii. So that's, I'm going to sign yep. off now and thank you very much, uh, Richard. And this is Mitch Yuen signing off from Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Aloha.